you across the land at JoePags.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there. Also, Newsmax TV. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have the president uh, from Judicial Watch back in the program. It's Tom Fitton. Tom, how are you? Hey, Pags. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me. It's always an absolute pleasure, man. There is so much going on, but I want to start with the hottest news of the week. Um, the fact that the left has to admit the president gave one hell of a speech the other night. In fact, uh, we just talked about this. 76% of CBS viewers said it was great. 59% of CNN viewers, which is stunning, thought it was great. Um, the media is trying to hone in on one line he said about investigations, and they're trying to allege that Stacey Abrams got it right when clearly she didn't even listen to his speech, and then she responded to something that didn't happen, I guess. But but let's talk right. about what, what the attack is um, on, on the whole investigations line. You actually think that he didn't go far enough, right? Yeah, I think he was being nice. He was talking about absurd, ridiculous investigations that are harassing. Uh, and that's the least of it. I think it's a, and I say, said it once and I'll say it again, a slow motion coup. Uh, the left wants to overthrow the president. And there are legal ways to do that through impeachment, however abusive it would be. Uh, but to uh, politicize the Justice Department and the FBI to target President Trump, not because of his conduct, that they know to be innocent on the underlying issue yeah. of Russia collusion, but based on the fact they don't like his tweets uh, and just making up uh, material as they go along. Even Adam Schiff today, or just the other day, I guess it was yesterday, he was announcing some sort of fishing expedition into his personal finances. But I mean, that isn't what Congress is supposed to be doing. It's he's he's just committing to more abusive investigations of the president. And you know this is not about the president personally, in my view, Joe, uh, because we can all disagree with the president now and again sure. and say, well, you know, I think he should do this versus that. But just because you disagree with the guy doesn't mean he needs to be thrown out of office or put in jail, which is the goal of the left. And their goal is if they can't get him, they'll get his family or they'll get his associates. Uh, this is this is a dangerous, dangerous period for our constitutional republic. If this is a new standard. You know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who still want to be president, but uh, what an ugly situation it will be. And the president, need, we need to defend this president and the presidency and our constitutional republic by standing against the Mueller overreach and congressional overreach that they're planning. They want to rifle through his tax returns. Yeah, no, it doesn't I mean, make any sense. I know sense. the law you, you, allows them to get individual tax returns, right. but not for legitimate reasons. Right. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And they didn't do any of this with, with Obama. In fact, they, they were at arm's length or 10-foot pole away from Obama on everything. You couldn't look into his past. Tom, we couldn't find out who he went to elementary school with or else we were racist somehow. So the yeah, idea... Joe, we, go ahead. we were no friends of President Obama. We, we sued the Obama administration hundreds of times. Right. We thought he was abusive of his power in office. You know, but the idea that we were going to prosecute him and right. put him in jail right. or frankly even impeach him, that was that was just not part of the discussion. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have been against impeaching him over some of the abuses, but that was after six or seven years of it. Right. They were talking impeachment from the moment he was elected. This has just been abuse after abuse. And the president's been victimized and harassed and his presidency has been impaired uh, by these types of investigations. Imagine you're the president. And you're trying to talk to foreign leaders or Russia, God forbid, Russia. Right. Uh, you know, it's got to be on the back of your mind. Well, how is my, how are my communications going to be interpreted by those out there trying to put me, my family and my associates in jail? And by the way, he's been very hard on Russia. The whole idea that there was Russian collusion is stupid. It's Tom Fitton. He's the president at Judicial Watch. Um, let's let's talk about the Russia collusion, uh, the whole idea of that for a moment, because I think many people watching and listening don't understand what you and I know. The, uh, the allegation of Russian collusion comes from the idea that WikiLeaks released a bunch of emails that John Podesta was dumb enough to be fished, and, and somebody got his emails. They're all true emails. Nobody argues any of the content in the emails. There is nothing to suggest that President Trump got a hold of Putin, who got a hold of uh, Julian Assange to say, hey, why don't you dump these so that I can win the election? That's just, I mean, that's stuff that you can't even make up in a James Bond movie. And, and now we just somehow we've whittled all that garbage down to its Russia collusion. And, and a lot of people gobble it up, Tom, because they don't like the guy, as you said. Do we do a good enough job at explaining what this whole idea of Russian interference even is? And Obama himself, before he left office, said not one vote will be changed by anybody interfering. And afterwards, everybody said not one vote was changed because of what happened. Do people understand well, well, what this really is? 
I think they do, and they've rejected it. And that's why he has poll numbers that would be typical for a president like President Trump. Yeah. Uh, if people thought seriously that he was an agent of a foreign power, uh, he wouldn't have poll numbers or approval numbers nearing 50%, which is probably par for the course, uh, given how politically divided the nation is. So uh, they've, they've, they've calculated it and or uh, discounted uh, the Russia collusion story already. Now it's being used uh, to generate excitement by the left. And just because the American people don't buy into it doesn't mean the swamp isn't pursuing it and the yeah. deep state isn't pursuing it. It, no, just the other day, Joe, did you see the Time Magazine piece where they were leaking the presidential daily briefing contents to Time Magazine nuts. And, and trying to characterize President Trump's involvement in a way that made him uh, look uh, foolish? Uh, another illegal classified leak that undermines our national security, but it's all about getting Trump. And they don't care about our national security if it means getting President Trump. It seems to very, be very, very serious. Tom, it seems to be two ways they're trying to get him through this soft coup. And I agree with you. That's what's going on, a very slow-moving soft coup. It's Tom Fitton, president at Judicial Watch. The one way is he colluded with Russia. Look, he wanted Russia to hack. Look, he's a bad guy. He's an agent. The other way is he's unfit. He's mentally, there's something wrong with the guy. Uh, he, he's uncouth, unfit. He's not smart. People have to feed him baby food in the, in the Oval Office or something. Those are the two angles that they're taking. Neither one is being effective so far. So what do you think they, they have up their sleeve left, or is that it? This is all they have? Uh, they're just going to run with it. They're going to harass him as best as they're able. Uh, Adam Schiff has uh, indicated that they plan to abuse power. Uh, though, as I would interpret what he plans to do, he the idea they're going to rifle it, right. through his tax returns. You know, uh, is any American com uh, comfortable with Congress targeting a person's tax returns just because they're interested in what to see what's in them? Boy, I, you know, I don't. You know, I know the law allows them to do that, but I hope the Constitution doesn't, yeah. and the courts intervene to stop that abuse from taking place. So, and I think Mueller is going to, to degree he even stops, and I'm not convinced he will. It's clear the baton has been handled, handed over to the deep state DOJ right. that's going to continue to harass President Trump. Uh, what, what a, um, but, you know, I know he's not paid anything because he's <laughs> rescinded his salary. Right. But he's taking, he's giving back his salary, but he ain't being paid enough uh, <laughs> to put up with the targeting that he's suffering. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. So there's no crisis at the border. Jim Acosta famously made that statement as he stood next to a barrier at the border like an idiot. He actually made the point that it's safe where there's a barrier. But you've got people who, who are actually saying there is no crisis and they want to be taken seriously. What do you say in response? Well, to admit there's a crisis, uh, it, it would force you to admit there needs to be a change in right. the current response to it, because obviously the crisis is in abating. Uh, the left would pretend because somehow the number of illegal aliens crossing at the border is less than it was 10 years ago. It's not a crisis, even though it continues to be in the tens of thousands. Uh, and that is a crisis. And uh, these aliens are crossing through Mexico only with the sufferance and uh, through uh, the operations of the narco-terrorist organizations right. known as the drug cartels. Uh, so this is a serious crisis, and then the border is unsecured. We have thousands of what the DHS calls special interest aliens, and these are aliens from other countries that whose conduct has raised national security alarms. So not all of them are, quote, per se terrorists, uh, but their activity is serious enough to put our folks who are concerned about issues like that on, on guard. And, you know, don't tell me that thousands of special interest aliens milling about and crossing the border is not a crisis. Right. You know, it, we're whistling past the graveyard in terms of the potential harms to our great country as a result of uh, the potential terrorist infiltration at the southern border. But we're seeing the, 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 uh, the results in massive illegal alien crime that otherwise would never have occurred but for these individuals being here yeah. every day. And uh, that, that's just a slow motion uh, uh, 
attack on the country as a result of unsecured borders. And by the way, ICE and Border Patrol say it's uh, it's about 50% now. People from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, and Mexico, 50% others, including Pakistan and many other countries that we would want to be concerned about. It's Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch's president. Uh, one last question. I'm going to do a hard uh, right turn here to the FISA court. I've always wanted to, uh, wanted to, an answer to this very simple question. The FISA court judges now know that Comey and McCabe and all these people down the line, Rothenstein uh, or Rosen uh, they all lied to get the, the FISA warrants renewed. They, they were planting stories on Yahoo News and acting like those stories were just generated by journalists. Look, we've got a story that backs up why we need this warrant. We know they lied. We know that they were regurgitating their own news to get these warrants to continue. The judges now know that. Isn't there any sort of, can't you be held in contempt? Can't you be brought up on, on charges of lying to a FISA court judge? Oh, the judges have dropped the ball here. Uh, there were four different judges. There was the initial application, and then the uh, then they had three renewal applications. Right. Uh, and and not one hearing was held on these applications seeking to spy on the Trump team. Uh, I don't expect them to do anything because they'd be putting they they'd be putting their own credibility has been harmed. Uh, by their rubber stamping of this spy operation against President but Trump. But there's no doubt what I just said happened, right? They lied to, to renew these warrants. And, and you're just saying that the FISA court judge said, well, we gave it to you the first time. It must still be good and just rubber stamped it, didn't even read it? They had no hearings on it. And I know they don't always have hearings on these FISA uh, applications. But it seems to me if you're targeting the president and his team, they'd be, they should be holding the DOJ to a minimal standard of coming on in and, and uh, being questioned on tell me why it is you're focused on the president of the united states here right. this is pretty darn serious stuff right and, and and the fact that you're showing me a news story that was created by the guy who's who you were using as a snitch to give you information that's interesting to me too they never checked any of that either yeah you know and of course we know what's who's uncovering this judicial watch judicial watch uncovered that christopher Steele was paid 11 times that christopher Steele was cut off by the fbi that the fisa courts held no court hearings congress didn't uncover that it was extracted through lawsuits and uh uh, diligent investigation by Judicial Watch. It's amazing. Uh, you know, so don't worry about what Schiff is or isn't doing, Joe. We'll be on the on the case. Here. <laughs> well, then, well, then we feel a little a little bit better, Tom. That's for sure. Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch, JudicialWatch.org, right, Tom? And uh, also right. on, on Twitter, it's at Judicial Watch, and go follow him as well, Tom Fitton, F I T T O N. Tom, thanks a million. Appreciate you. You're welcome, Joe. Thank you. Back after this on the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.